this chief, the one that I had to bring a different beret for, and the one that I had to constantly make sure my boots were polished for, that one was the same one that I got sent to anger management for because I told him that he that he was a fuckhead and he would be dead and gone before he would get any of the cabinets that I had. I'm sorry, did you say cabinets? Were you hoarding cabinets as well? No, I had done my on-the-job training. I had gone to my actual unit. And the army, in its infinite wisdom, had decided to send me to a forward support company. The way a forward support company worked is now, instead of having all this expertise that you can pull from, from a whole shop filled with mechanics or a whole shop filled with armors, you now have one armor. Private first class, Zach. <laughs> you! You are in charge of everything. Who has spent three weeks as on-the-job training. And that's all the experience. Yeah, I had no idea how to fill out the, the correct forms. I knew how to fix guns. I didn't know how to fill out forms. I didn't know how to get things. I didn't know what kind of parts I was going to need to order. Okay. And they basically went, figure it out. <laughs> so when I got to the company that I was in, immediately... There are unit armors coming to me and saying, I need this fixed, I need this fixed, I need this fixed. I have 24 M4s that need to be gauged. I have all these things that are broken, and I need this fixed. And I'm like, cool, I don't have any parts, I don't have any gauges, I don't know what the hell I'm doing, I'm inside this brick building. I had to go through every manual for every weapon that was used by the six infantry companies I'm supposed to support. I had to go through every manual, look at every weapon, and go... I'll probably need this part, and I'll probably need this part, and I'll probably need this one. I don't think I'll need this part. I had to guess at all this stuff. So I, I came up with this massive, and it took me months. I came up with a massive list of parts that I was going to need in quantities of things. I ordered all those parts, and then the parts got to me in cardboard boxes and plastic envelopes. And I have no way to organize these parts. I didn't go to college Yes, you and I went into the military, so I have no idea how to organize a whole part system. Anytime someone's like, "Oh, Zach's so dumb," I'm just like, "You have no idea the amount of fucking work I have." That's that's one of the reasons I'm so lazy now is because I put everything into doing this stuff while I was in the military. You really had to bust your ass. I had to. Oh my god, it's why it's one of the reasons I started smoking and having really bad anxiety attacks. I don't have PTSD from being in Iraq. I have PTSD from being at Fort Polk and having to run a forward support company by myself. <laughs> in any other unit, the job I was in would have been a warrant officer position. I was an E3. The, oh, you weren't even an E4 yet. You were just an E3. I was an E3 holding the position of a warrant officer. I was like, I don't know. I guess I can fix these guns for you, but I mean, really, you're supposed to do this paperwork. And then eventually it got to a point where I was, where I was just big, bad, angry, Zach, where I was just like, no, you can go fuck yourself, Sergeant. I'm not fixing any of your shit because you don't have the fucking paperwork. <laughs> so... I got all these parts ordered. They sent a bunch of the wrong ones. I don't know what the hell I'm doing with all these parts. They're just sitting in cardboard boxes. And anytime I need to get a part, I have to dig through cardboard boxes and talk. You need a new hammer for your M16? Cool. This is going to take me about two hours to find this one because I don't know where the hell it is in this mess. <laughs> I got so frustrated with having to dig through these cardboard boxes. I'm like, fine. I, I need cabinets. Did you purchase these cabinets with your own funds? Or? No, I purchased them with the, with the funds that was allotted to our unit for that fiscal year. Okay. I ordered these cabinets. Cabinets get sent to the wrong company. Cool. All right. Well, I have to go get these cabinets now. So I go to I go to sign on a five-ton truck so that I can go pick up these cabinets. Jeez. All right. Way more involved than I thought. I, I feel like I have to tell you all the effort that went into these cabinets so you can understand why I did what I did. Okay. Once I have the backstory, you refusing to surrender cabinets might make more sense. Yes. So, I gotta go get a 5-ton to go pick up these cabinets. I go to get a 5-ton. There's no 5-tons available. What do you mean there's no 5-tons available? There's like 25 tons sitting out there. Nope, we don't have a single one that you can drive. Besides, do you even have a permit to drive that? Of course I do. My shop is on the back of one. Why don't you just use the truck that your shop is on? I can't do that because the shop weighs 7.5 tons and the cabinets don't fit in the door of the shop that's on the back of the truck. Well, we don't have any trucks for you to use. Fine! <laughs> So I walk a mile down to Bravo because if I drive my car down there and I get a truck at Bravo Company, then I'm going to have to drive the truck back. And it, you, you walked down to Bravo Company where the cabinets were delivered because you figured maybe they had a truck you could use. Maybe they had a truck I could use. They have a truck. Hooray! 
Thank you. Thank you for being nicer to me than my own company will. <laughs> Clementine will remember this. <laughs> I find someone with a forklift to pick up the cabinets and put them in the bed of the truck. I drive the truck back to my motor pool. I bring them outside my office. We don't have a forklift. <laughs> now the cabinets have to come off the truck. I had to get like 20 people to help me pick up these cabinets and put them on the ground outside of my shop. Jeez. Now I have to figure out how to get them in my shop. They don't fit in the door. <laughs> no! <laughs> well, actually, I'm, I'm sorry. Let me rephrase that. They fit in the door, but only if I take all the drawers out. <sighs> okay. To, that, to that, lighten them up somewhat. That's better anyway, because you're going to move the cabinet anyway. Why not take out the drawers? Take out all the drawers, get the cabinets put in my shop. They got nice little drawers in them, and I can put little things. It's like the inside of a tackle box in these cabinets. You pull the drawer out, and they got a bunch of dividers in there, and you just put the parts in it. If I needed a part... I could look at the list that I had made on my my own personal computer on Excel on the massive 300 plus page document that listed what the NSN for the part was, what the name for the part was, how many of them I had, and what drawer and slot they were in. You went so far above and beyond what was expected of you. If you, if you had the chance to go back in time, would you tell yourself not to give so much of an effort? Because you worked your ass off, and you never even made the rank of sergeant. Yeah, if I could go back in time and talk to you past me, I would be like, look, just don't do anything. Brush it off. Maybe if you're lucky, they'll send you to a not-forward support company, because they'll think you're unreliable. If you keep working this hard, they're going to find you irreplaceable. They're never going to promote you. You're stuck. Be a lazy piece of shit. I, I started doing that. Towards the end of my military career, I just started being a lazy piece of trash, and I didn't care anymore. Anyway. If only you had started earlier. This is this is great. I finally have organization for all my parts. It only took you four weeks to get this set up. Two months. And then probably another three weeks after that, getting all the parts put into all the bins and organized by, like, size and what weapon system they go to. Top drawers for M9 parts. Second drawers for M4 parts. Next drawers for M4 parts. Drawer after that is M16 and 249 parts. I finally have my full bench stock list on a computer. Everything is available. Someone can come in and say, hey, the spring broke for my M16. And before they're finished with the sentence, I can say, excellent, I have six of them. Here is your part. Sign here, here, and here. And everything will work smoothly like clockwork. I can't even tell you how happy I was with the setup. And then Chief <laughs> came into my shop and looked lustfully at my cabinets. <laughs> and his heart, yay, it was filled with avarice. <laughs> avarice? Greed. Ah, uh, yes. Hey, hot speed of nice cabinet. You give it up in an accent? No, that's how he talked. He referred to everyone as high speed and he talked with a really bad lisp. Oh, okay. Then three really nice cabinet. Y yes, they are, Chief. It took me a long time to get them. I remember I put the order in. Yeah. It took me a long time to finally get these in here. Those are really nice ha cabinets, high speed. I think I'm going to need them. No, Chief, I just ordered these cabinets. I need them. I have all my parts in them. Half speed, I'm going to need them cabinets to put Humvee parts in. The Humvee parts aren't going to fit. In yeah. There. <laughs> yeah. The drawers are too small for mm -hmm. Humvee parts. Mm -hmm. So it, it ended up devolving into from a conversation of, no, Chief, you cannot have these cabinets. I just ordered these. I need them. Into, Chief, you can go fuck yourself, and I'm going to punch you in the goddamn face if you don't get the fuck out of my shop. I think maybe we missed a step or two here. Eventually, it resulted in me calling him an idiot and telling him that he would be dead and gone before he would ever lay a fucking finger on any of my cabinets. I feel like there might be some fallout from And he that. said, we'll see about that high speed, and walked out. At which point I grabbed the pencil mount for a 50 caliber machine gun and threw it through a metal wall locker. I shot putted a six pound chunk of metal so hard into a metal cabinet that it punched a hole through it. Uh, so you damaged your own cabinet that you just received? Oh, no, no, no. This, this was a different cabinet. This was just like a metal wall locker. Okay. Did anybody see you do this violent act? Yes. My squad leader came to talk to me, and he said, You should not have done what you just did. And I said, Oh, gee, no shit. You fucking think? <laughs> so you're at that point where you know you fucked up, and you're just wondering, What's happening now? I had to go, I had to go talk to the company commander. I got chewed out. When I came back, my cabinets were gone and all my parts were on the floor mm -hmm. in cardboard boxes. Of again. course. So yeah. I had to order more cabinets. As it turns out, what happened was better than I ever could have imagined. They sent me to anger management. <laughs> I got to anger management. 
And sitting in anger management is a staff sergeant, a captain, a lieutenant, <laughs> a warrant officer, a major, a staff sergeant, a all staff very sergeant, high, a staff sergeant. These are all very high-ranking members. These are all people who are much higher ranking than me. And then E4 Zach. Oh, you had been promoted in between. The- oh, sorry. Uh, was I an E4 at this time? I can't remember if I was an E4 or an E3. So everyone has to talk about why they're there, and it's... Well, my name's Sergeant So and So, and I punched one of my one of my soldiers in the face because he wouldn't stop mouthing off to me. <laughs> Seems reasonable to me. Seems reasonable that you would be here. Not reasonable that you would punch one of your soldiers for mouthing off. If that seems reasonable to me. I can understand that happening. So everyone's going around and talking about what they did wrong. They get to me, and I said, "My name is uh, my name is E Four Zach. Um, I'm here because I told my chief warrant officer to go fuck himself, and that I thought he was a massive piece of shit." Okay, that's weird. Why is there an E4 in here? While I'm in anger management, someone from my company calls me and asks why I'm not in my shop fixing weapons. <laughs> and at which point I didn't even reply, I just snapped my phone in half. <laughs> in anger management, this... Put the phone down on the table. This is why I'm here. <laughs> and I just remember several of these other officers just looking at me like, I understand. <laughs> I... I feel like they said it was anger management, but I'm pretty sure it was a incompetence of Fort Polk support group. (laughs) It's just where they send the people that can't deal with the incompetence at Fort Polk. (laughs) They just send them here so they can all just talk to each other about how fucked everything was. It's good to vent. I ended up going to anger management for like four or five months. I have no proof of this, but I'm wondering if when I had told my chief to go fuck himself... If they were like, we've got to kick him the fuck out of the military. And then they went, wait, if we kick him out, we don't have anybody to fix guns. (laughs) Shit. And that was the first time that you had job security. Yeah. I'm 99% positive that I could have gotten away with pretty much anything while I was in the military. Because I was the only one they had to fix guns. You never took advantage of this, though. I did, just in weird ways. (laughs) When you started off this story, I figured there'd be a happy ending. You made a spectacle of yourself, damaged some machinery, and he said, Whoa, okay, you can keep them. And walked away. No, you had to get new cabinets. You had to order a second pair of cabinets. Had to order a second pair of cabinets. Fortunately, these ones actually showed up at my motor pool. Well, that's good at least. But I still didn't have a forklift to take them off the back of the truck. Oh boy, many hands make light work. Yeah. Well, on the plus side, though, when I would go to anger management, we would do relaxation techniques, and I would get to fall asleep. Ah. <laughs> so sometimes anger management just meant nap time. Oh boy! <laughs> I'm glad this story had a happy ending after all. <laughs>